Welcome to my video. This is a blow up picture of the circuit demonstrated in my introductory video. Let's take a little closer look before we state our goals for this series of lessons and what we hope to accomplish. We're going to be studying tri-state switches or what somebody people would call tri-state buffers. I'm interested for instance in driving motors and higher powered devices. Tri-state means very simply the output is either high, low, or floating. This side that you see over here was done with trans bipolar transistors. The left side over here was done with power MOSFET transistors. You can use one or the other. You can change the configuration or even mix the transistor types as I will demonstrate. I want to keep the circuits component count to a minimum so each side uses a single integrated circuit. This side because of differences in transistors I use this little NPN transistor as an inverter but this chip here and this chip here are the same. They're basically four input no two input quad NAND gates. But we will look close at that. We have an enable switch and we have a direction switch. So let's take a close look at the many different circuits that you can use to construct this item. All right, here's some of the sample circuits we will end up with in the end. In fact, this circuit, if you look at it, runs down the page. And while it may look big and scary, it really isn't. It's three integrated circuits and four MOSFETs and uh, three resistors. That's it for a complete 12 volt um, H bridge motor control. Real nice. All right, another version that we will eventually build up to is a 24 volt preferably 5 amp or higher H bridge motor control but this time we're going to be doing things for a little different we're going to use a couple of optocouplers two of them to be precise the original circuit I discussed earlier but the outputs are going to be IGBTs and TIP 120 NPN transistors what I'll be covering in this uh, little series of video is a review on optocouplers, a review on transistors, why I would want to use an IGBT instead of a TIP120, and so forth. And this is still a CMOS circuit. This is 12 volts. Back here on your left are your input circuits and enable um, DN1 and DN2. And this is a complete 24 volt tri-state switching H-bridge motor control. Tri-state being it's either the output, such as at this point, is either high, low, or floating. So let's look at this from a modular perspective. I'm going to look at this from a modular viewpoint, as you can see here. There's two types of what I'm going to call TRIS switches. If you see a bubble, let's change that. If you see a bubble, you know it's an inverting. If it's a high in on D, it's going to be a low out here. This one is a non-inverting, so a high in on D is going to be a high out here. It's always possible to use two inverting and two non-inverting, but it depends on how you want to operate it. You can connect the two D pins together, which I call D DIN or data in. And then we have two pins on each one called E or enable. A low on the enable turns off both of the TRIS switches. That is no output. It's high Z and floating. If I create a high on this, if enable goes high, then whatever goes in on DIN is inverted on the le left 
and non-inverted on the right. The goal of this, okay, this is a redrawing of an H bridge. It's going to be a lot of different ways to build these depending on what components you want to use, voltages involved, and so forth. So I'm going to operate from the viewpoint of a 12 or 24 volt motor running at 5 amps. All right, let's look at our first example. I have uh, driven enable high and DN I have high. Of course, high is going to be inverted to a low. That is, the pin internal electronics in this inverting tris switch will switch it to ground. But it's not going to be inverted here. It's going to output 12 or 24 volts. Note that I'm not showing the power connections in this drawing. And thus, what do you got? You got a current flow plus to minus, motor spins, all that nice stuff. If you want to shut it off at any time, just uh, change enable to low and it goes back to floating. All right, example number two, enable is high and DN is low. Okay, low is going to be invert it to a high on my left tris, but it's not going to be inverted on the right, so it's high, low, get a current flow, plus to high to low, plus to minus, if you want to look at it that way, motor reverses direction, if you want to shut it off, drive enable back to low. Okay, here's example number three. I have separated the DN pins from the two TRIS switches. I still have an inverting. I have a non-inverting. So I have DIN A, DIN B, and Enable. In this configuration, if I wanted to use both, uh, both inverting or both non-inverting, I have individual controls of the individual TRIS switches. This is what I mean. I want you to get used to modular thinking. And they will only be switched on when enable is driven high. Then you can control um, high and low in or whatever. Just be aware of that. All right, here is example number four. In this case, I have my motor one side connected to ground and the positive side connected to a non-inverting TRIS switch. As before, I will get no output unless enable is high. So if enable is high and I have a high input on the DIN pin, D or data, the motor will turn on because the motor voltage switched on. If I take the DN pin low, the motor is switched through the TRIS switch to ground. This acts as sort of a brake. So that's, this, that's the end of this brief introduction. The next video, we're going to be looking at some actual circuitry to build inverting and non-inverting tri-state power switches. And to reiterate, our goal is to eventually build a 12 or 24 volt H bridge motor control with using a 5 amp motor. That's the basis of this series. So uh, click the like button if you would, subscribe to my channel, and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thank you for viewing.